hey guys this video is releasing after the update came out the developer little update talking about all the plans they're making for all of these changes and some of the negatives in this video but i'm still going to upload this video because they are still an issue right now and we do want to see them fixed so yeah just a little disclaimer if you see anything like oh they addressed this today i know they addressed it but i already made the video videos going up because it's still relevant to our current issue until we see these changes hey guys what's up it's azure so just before i move forward with this video i just want to note that i'm not feeling too well so if i sound a bit weird on the mic it's because i'm a little bit congested but we're just going to go forward with this um wuthering ways has been out for over a week now um you may not remember, but I did a reaction video a very long time ago. Uh, I know I haven't really done content on it since, but I've still been following the release and it's out and I've been playing it since launch day. And oh my God, I am, I'm loving this game. This game is amazing, but as amazing as this game is, there is issues. And I just wanted to make a video to talk about the good and bad of Wuthering Waves. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about the positives and negatives of Wuthering Waves. Now I've tried to come up with 10 for each side and I'll be honest with you, maybe i'm white knighting a little bit maybe i'm being biased i can't find 10 negative things about this game so we're going to do the negatives first and then we're going to go into the positives right get the negatives out the way constructive criticism is needed you know you can't have games can't get better if you don't say what's the issue right what's wrong with them so we're going to start out with the negatives i got about roughly eight one of them is like personal one of them is not exactly linked to the game itself more so the marketing side of things but anyway we're going to start out with those and we're going to go into the positive things these are in random order except the first one for negatives so here we go the first one because it has nothing to do with the game itself specifically but yeah anyway the market and the market in for weathering ways wasn't the best but somehow near the, when it was getting closer to launch i guess they ramped it up and it just dude it shot up from 20 mil to 30 million pre-registrations like quick as hell so that was crazy um the live stream i'm not going to talk much about it we all know about that live stream it wasn't the best They've heard the feedback. Hopefully they do better for the next live streams to get people hyped for the patch updates. I'm looking forward to see what the 1.1 live stream is going to be like if they end up doing one. I don't know Kuro Games' usual rotation of their marketing because I don't play Punishing Grey Raven. So we'll see what happens with that. Issue number two, or I guess a negative number two, is the slow start to the story. Quite a slow, it's a, bit, it's a slow burn. Um, and that's fine before, you know, anyone gets so antsy. Listen, I play a lot of jrpgs i grew up on jrpgs right there's a lot of jrpgs where the story is slow as hell at the beginning there really is and once you get through that little slow part it usually tends to pick up right and for most games um i play f14 that's a good example if you're a f14 player you already know ar starts off a bit slow and then it picks up so yeah it's fine it's not the end of the world it's not the worst negative in the world it's just a negative right it is a negative thing though it's not a positive thing because it might deter some players from continuing with the game past that point of the slow story so that's why I say it's a negative, but it's not the end of the world. It's fine because it gets better. Number three is portable cooking and synthesis. Listen, look, blame Starro. Starro made me lazy. I never used to have an issue on Genshin, travel into an oven or a furnace to craft something or cook something. But listen, yo, Starro, I can do that shit anywhere, right? That made me so lazy because I'm playing rather in ways and I'm like, man, I want to synthesize. Ah, oh, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to to teleport there and then i gotta glide over or, or hook over and then the same with the cooking like i want to cook ah i'm gonna get to like <laughs> it just made me so lazy so this isn't like again it isn't the worst negative in the world it's literally just a minor pet peeve but it's still a negative right it's, it's still a negative to talk about on the game hopefully down the line they give us like a portable synthesis or cooking equipment um or maybe there is one in the game that i just don't know about if there is let me know if there isn't then hopefully down the line we get that little cure well We'll see where it goes. We're literally in 1.0, but for now, it is a minor negative for me. Now, this is for everyone. Glitches. Oh man, the glitches in this game. You out here trying to give someone the smoke, and then the TD just starts running away. I'm like, where are you going? What? They run into like corners and shit. Like, what are you doing, man? Um, one of the glitches I've experienced is no music. Sometimes I'll ever get music that's just playing forever. This one song that just plays forever, and it doesn't matter where I teleport to. It will keep playing this one song and cutscenes everything unless i restart the game or sometimes it's just no music i've had glitches where there's just no music at all music just turns off on its own and i'm like bro i didn't beat the game my spotify ain't going right now so glitches in general i know people have had many other glitches trying to look into the game there's, there's been a lot of optimization issues with this game uh, so i guess that can link into this as well glitches and optimization and you know kuro games they're doing what they can to fix it but the issue still stands that there are still issues so it is a negative now again it's not going to stop me from playing the game i played genshin for like a year on ps4 and that shit was not optimized for ps4 
at all. To, to, to this day, actually, I don't know. You know what? I'm not going to say to this day because I haven't played it in about two years on PS4, but two or three years. But I played it for like a year from launch day, right? From the beta on PS4. And that was laggy. So it's like a lot of games released with optimization issues, right? It's one of them things where like it's going to get better. It might not for some people because that might just be optimization and then your equipment as well combined might not be the best. But it will get better. They're working on it. It's fine. Camera and targeting issues. Now, I don't have footage of this because, it, of course, it doesn't happen when I decide to record. But um, I've seen a lot of people, and one of my friends as well, has had issues with targeting. Sometimes you're targeting an enemy, and you've actually hit the target button, and it just it snapshots you to another enemy, or you want to target a new enemy with a target. Or even when you don't have the target button activated, right? You don't have the actual lock on activated. It just messes up sometimes. It's like it just snapshots to the last enemy you was hitting if you try and do something else, or... It's weird. It's very weird. Um, it's weird. It's a weird glitch, and hopefully they fix that uh, going forward. I know that is more like a, on, along with the glitches, but still, I feel like camera issues and glitches. It is a glitch, but yeah, I would count that as a separate issue because the camera specifically has to do with the targeting system alone. So, but anyway, that's another negative. Hopefully, they get that fixed down the line. But but first of all, let's just kudos that they have a targeting system. Oh my lord, I'm so glad they do. It's a godsend for the most part. Wave place. Listen, man, why does nothing in this game? cost 20 wave plates I, I it actually triggers me not even like xp xp costs 40 and then you've got our domains aka the tacit fills which costs what is it 60 i believe i'm like bro the domain of forgeries 40 i'm like no 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 listen you could sit there and be like, oh but we start with 240 in this game unlike genshin where we had 160 and 180 i, I don't care I, I don't care how much stamina we have Right, and it's gonna be compared to the games that are like it. It's gonna be compared. Listen, look, Star Row. When I play Star Row, the XP stages, the Calyxes, it costs ten. I can get so much done in a day, stamina wise, right? And it's just like, man, I really wish the XP stuff at least like cost twenty, like minimum. Like, come on, man, we got two forty. Tasty feels are expensive. Let me please at least get XP for cheap. Now, if there is anyone out there who thinks, oh, well, if they give us more resin, uh, sorry, stamina, it'll fix the issue. No, 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 no. Making the size of the bowl bigger won't fix the issue. You still need, you still need to increase the recharge rate of the energy itself. So giving us more energy or stamina, whatever you call it, is not going to change anything. You still need to change the recharge rate of the stamina. So 240 is fine. I would just like them to either up the recharge rate maybe, or just, because I know it is exactly 24 hours. If you wait exactly 24 hours from when you use the all, you will have 240, which is, that is nice. That is a good thing. It's just, man, that 20, man. Sometimes I'm like, I wish I could just do a bit more, get a bit of like to finish off. I'm one of those people on uh, Genshin or Star Row or any game that has stamina, right? Where you have to use your stamina in dungeons. I normally, whatever I have left over, I like to use on XP. So the fact I can't use what I have left over, unless, like, you know what I mean? Like that little bit of like, oh, that's just extra from the main stuff that we usually farm. I can use it on the XP. I can't do that on this game. I have to choose. Do I want XP? Do I want this? Do I want that? It's, uh, it's a little bit jarring. It's a little bit jarring. So that to me is a negative that nothing costs 20 at least like the minor things don't even cost 20 like that that jars me that jars me voice lines uh this is along another much of the glitches stuff but the voice lines if you play your game on auto i don't know about japanese because i play the game in dub if you play your game in auto play when there's cutscenes, the characters cut off half their sentences all the time and i'm like bro if you're not really like sometimes you might need to multitask so you want to put a cutscene on auto play because you just need to look at something else real quick and you look away for a second if you're not looking you might miss two whole words like there's <laughs> Uh, for like a couple like uh, multiple sentences it's really irritating because i'm like um uh, genshin has this issue as well i don't know if it still has it to this day because i haven't played genshin in a while but i remember the genshin had this issue with some cutscenes, uh mainly the cg ones not like the the regular ones but the Wuthering ways has this issue with nearly all the cutscenes. oh it's terrible it's really bad um doesn't have it with the cg ones it's mainly all, all the regular ones it's, it's i don't like it it's a negative it's annoying it's very irritating and while we're on the topic of voice lines, the English dub VAs are all hit or miss, man. This is a negative to me because specifically, I know it's the main voice a lot of people have issues with is Yang Yang. And I sat there and I started the game and I was like, she don't sound that bad. Until you get into these dire R situations, right? And she's still just sitting there like, oh, well, I'm, I'm like, bitch, if you don't have a sense of urgency, like what's good, <laughs> ma'am. Like, there's other voices as well. I'm not the biggest fan of Chi Shai's. I think hers a little bit. Like, sometimes it sounds good to me, and then there's other times where it doesn't. Uh, but there's some really good ones in there. I think Gian's the top, top, top man. Whoever voice directed Gian, amazing. I know it's mainly the voice director. I know it's not exactly the voice actor's fault. I get that. I know it's the voice direction. I do understand that. So I'm not coming at the voice actors, by the way. 
yeah let's just hopefully in future updates since yang yang is going to be around she said you know they voice direct a bit better and they take the feedback but who knows who knows what's going to happen there's other characters too that don't really sound the greatest i can't on the top of my head she's just the main one on the top of my head um i don't want to say chi shy's hit or miss depending on the cutscene itself uh but yeah the dub could be better um like I said, some of the stronger voices in there, or at least I guess directed voices in there for me were Ji Yan, uh, Jin Shi, Chung Li, even though we had Chung Li for like, well, like two seconds. Um, and the rover, I think the, I play the male rover. The male rover sounds amazing. Oh my God. I don't know about you guys, but the male rover sounds great. I know that's a positive we're talking about negatives right now, but yeah, the English dubs hit and miss. And that's all the negatives I can think of. That was roughly about seven or eight. Yep. Uh, I can't really, like I said, if there's any other negatives you guys can think of, Please throw it down there. I've just hit the end game myself, so I haven't really got too much to say about the end game yet. I've got to experience it a bit more. But um, do let me know what you guys think uh, are more issues in this game that could hopefully, that you want fixed, that we could hopefully see fixed in the foreseeable future. Right, now we're going to talk about the positives. The combat. No one can tell me that the combat in this game is just not so bloody satisfying, right? The, 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 you got the perfect dodges, the little witch times, um you got the the little intro skills the outro skills it just feels very smooth it feels like uh it feels very rewarding in this game when you the, the more you play a set character it feels very rewarding it feels like you get better with them the more you play them because you actually need to know what every character does of yours on your team in this game this game has a higher skill entry than a lot of other gacha and you can feel it, and I love it, because it's just its just such a good challenge. It's nothing, like, too crazy. But at the same time, it does take dedication to get better with your characters, right? And there's this one thing that I didn't realize I was doing until... Forgive me if I'm botching your name. Content creator uh, Io or Eo. Something, uh, let me know if I'm botching that, something like that. Um, they had a video. I just can't remember how he said it. Um, they had a video uh, made the other day, I think it was yesterday, about new combo routes and stuff right and it's to do with like uh, uh switch cancelling and a term called negative edging which is to do with the fighting game community now me i do play fighting games myself but i'm not like knee deep in it like that i really do i don't i just know a couple of notations i learn my bnbs a couple of advanced combos i go about my day i'm not really like knee deep in it so i never heard of negative edging before so I watched that video and I was like, yo, that's crazy. That's what I'm doing. There's like a thing in this. Game. I'm going to show it on screen now. You can do these like special cancels where a character is still out there doing their animation while your character, while a new character comes in and fights basically. And I'd already been doing this with my Kalkaro, which you will see on screen. And you'll see, I'll show you with GN as well, because that's who he was uh, showing us with the GN. I didn't realize that I was doing it. I was just doing it randomly. But now that I know, like now I know that this exists and this is an actual thing, I'm now intentionally doing it which just makes the game feel even more fun and the combat feel even better there's also the parry system which is just endless fun endless fun who doesn't like the parry system that shit is so satisfying when you get that cling like multiple when you get multiple parries off man you can't tell me that shit ain't satisfying man and i specifically like the it's not called a stagger gauge but because i play final fantasy games i see it as a stagger gauge you get the stagger gauge get down um it breaks and then they fall down and you do your big damage you take a bit of it. like i love that i love that idea of that it's really cool it's very satisfying the movement in this game the parkour the the flips over the the rooftops um when you get to the top or over a cliff when you get to the top running on the side like again the parkour the free running so satisfying very smooth when there's no frame drops um and just very fun makes the exploration very fun in this game even when you're outside of combat you have a good time you have the little hook thing cooldown should be a little smaller than that i guess for like for combat so you can't bullshit but that's really cool i like that i think that's really cool this is two different points, but they kind of link together. Uh, designs and models. So, first of all, the designs. I think the character designs in this game, compared to a lot of other anime-style games out there, unless they are supposed to, like Verino or Encore, most characters in the game don't have what is known as a little bit of an anime like Babyface. And a lot of the characters are very like mature looking, and I love that. I think it's really cool. It's a bit different. I find it a bit different because you don't really find it in a lot of anime media and stuff like video games and stuff. So I do really like that. I think that's a really cool thing. Um, also, the models look one-to-one -one with their official artwork, which is even more amazing. There's some anime games out there, or anime-style games, where the character models don't look nearly anything like their actual artwork. The artwork looks a million times better, or vice versa, right? So it's good to know that the models literally look one-to-one -one when you look at them side-by-side -side with the artwork. Like, you can exactly see, like, yeah, boom, that's the character, 100%. No bullshit here, no false advertisement. 
the music the music in this game in the combat is cool like it's fire the music in the final boss was fire for the base game um the silent music when you're um exploring that is just oh man it does a very good job of adding to the games like ambience right it's just a nice feeling along with the parkour and along with my next point outside of the music and the ambience the graphics whoever found out about that gamma shader the gamma slider i don't know who it was who found it out i just saw it being shared around by a lot of people i don't know who the original source was apologies if i haven't given you a credit here but whoever it is your credits to you because the game already looked gorgeous like this game is graphically like it's very impressive very impressive but when you turn that brightness or the gamma shader down i put mine down to like maybe like a quarter of my brightness man that shit hit different oh another game it's literally night and day. literally it's literally night and day um i absolutely love it i hope you guys love it i hope you guys are enjoying that man if you haven't put your gamma down if you haven't done it put your gamma down as far as you can uh you know deal with it to go down it's fine but you're happy with it's so customizable it's game looks amazing another thing i love how much easier it is to ascend your characters on this game i love it uh, compared to a lot of the gacha it's just so quick to get your characters up so you can sit there and be on par at least level wise with what you're facing in the game i love it i think the materials as well like the flowers like the local specialties that we would well we'd call them that in genshin local specialties i think they respawn every correct me if i'm wrong 24 hours which is like amazing if you're trying to get a character when you get to like the 70s and the 80s and you just need probably like more than 10 it's like oh well at least i can, I can guarantee get it tomorrow instead of having to wait two to three days so that's really cool i like that a lot this one links in with what i was saying earlier about the wave plates so one of the positive things even though the wave plates you know there's nothing that costs a low amount of wave plates you can farm echoes as much as you want and i love that shit i absolutely love that shit i think that shit is amazing i like that you can literally just go around and just farm all the echoes you need outside of your wave plates instead of like you get on your gacha game any gacha game use your stamina man i don't have much left to do today other than like some end game stuff this game's like if you use your stamina guess what you can still go farm your gear your gear without your stamina which is that's cool i think that's really cool i like that a lot and i'm very happy that that is a thing in the game because there's no gate and you can you know you have hours of endless fun with your friend you can go around farming echoes with your friends if you like the co-op aspects of the game which is really good the story now i said earlier the story starts so slow uh, a little bit early in the game i think the story picks up the moment the scar enters specifically the level 14 gated quest um after you meet scar if you do the level 14 quest from then onwards i think the game really like picks up and starts to get more interesting one thing I love about this game with the story is I love how involved our rover is, our protagonist. Like, uh, I'm going to compare it, unfortunately. Uh, Genshin, we don't really get to talk much in Genshin. Star Rail, we got to talk a lot more in Star Rail, and it felt like we were more involved in Star Rail as well. Outside of just us talking a lot, it felt like our decisions actually like had some sort of matter in it. This game does a really good job of making you feel involved as well. Like, you actually have a say. Like, there's times where you tell the characters to leave. The protagonist is just mad. So there is no reason for the protagonist to be as saucy as they are in this game. I'm playing the Mel Rover. My dude is saucy as hell. For no reason. Like, there's no reason for him to be as saucy as he is. He just is. He just is. And with the game making you feel like you're actually a part... It's really good. I, I, yeah, I like how the game involves the protagonist a lot. On top of the story picking up for me personally from quest level 14 onwards. And the climax was really good. I really did enjoy the climax of this base game 1.0 story. The final thing I'm going to talk about is Kuro games being transparent. Yes, I know they're in hot water right now with JP. I understand that. Um, outside of that, just in general with how quick they've been with responding with the issues people have had with the game and telling us exactly what they're going to do about it. Outside of the five star, yeah, free five star, whatever. Actually, the, the fixing of the game. We've had a lot of patches come out since launch. They're trying to do what they can to fix the optimization. Obviously, it does boil down to some people's equipment as well. Like, I know my PC is not the best. Like, dead ass, my PC is not the best. So that along with the optimization just it doesn't make for a good combination so i have to play on lower settings but eventually i'll upgrade my pc and i can play a higher settings so that'll be cool but yeah they are i do like how transparent crew games have been with us and it is nice to know they're trying to do what they can to make amends for all the issues in the game but i'm not going to white knight them they have fucked up a bit a little bit um like i said with the jp situation going on it's tough with the emails and man and the, the description of the weapon is it's tough it's tough hang in there guys so that is uh i guess i guess that one will be a positive and a negative that one does have a positive and a negative side to it but um yeah that is it for today's video thank you for anyone who came through i do look forward to talking to you guys some more about weathering ways i'm enjoying the game i hope you're enjoying the game i'm gonna keep playing the game and i hope you're gonna keep playing the game and uh yeah have a good rest of your day um yeah there's any positives or negatives i don't know about let me know in the comment section below and i'll catch you guys in the next one